hemos podido crear sinergias entre cada uno de los gremios ladrilleros a nivel nacional. Hemos podido plantear sobre la mesa nuestras propuestas eh, en, eh, para el cambio de políticas públicas. Y qué eh, gratificante poder saber y poder co eh, conocer el contexto de nuestro sector a nivel nacional. El sector ladrillero en Colombia era una de las principales fuentes de material particulado que afectaba a la comunidad en temas respiratorios y cardiovasculares. Se reconoce el trabajo que ha tenido la CAEM, Corporación Ambiental Empresarial, que desde mucho tiempo atrás la iniciativa viene trabajando con el sector ladrillero y desde sus inicios ha aportado conocimiento técnico y nos ha permitido un acercamiento con personas en campo. Allowed us to approach the people in the field and uh, by emission reduction technologies we have identified from that time the brick maker have changed the mindset. It is important to control emissions, but also measure them. All companies are interested in having linear emissions. Mission, me, measurements give us speak in the same terms without emissions. la comunidad que está a nuestro alrededor como la de nosotros mismos. We as a sector are aware of what their responsibility is and the uh, compliance we need to have. The brick making sector we represent is an industrial sector. It is a formal sector submitted to the law in the whole extension from environment regulations. Internationally, we recognize Colombian work and CAEM in matters of measurements and technical scientific work we've developed with the brick making sector. Thank, special thanks to the Entrepreneurial Corporation and the Clean Air Coalition for keeping us in mind. More than 10 years with their help, we have achieved many of the processes we have included in our organization. Being included in the brick making national sector is for us a dream come true. Good morning, you all. Welcome to the last session of International Technology Transference. Today, the topic is networking association. This topic, we want to have it at the end. We're going to wonder if really associations and all networking do contribute or not to the competitiveness, or if this is a gap where we need to continue working and evidently we need to evolve. Throughout this transference, we have embraced many topics. We started with the public policy makers and entrepreneurs, then after we talked about techno conversion, emission factors, modeling, air quality uh, measurements. And the last session today, we're going to share successful experiences in associations and collaboration of autonomous regional corporations in Cundinamarca province in Colombia and innovation competitiveness for middle and small small companies. We welcome you. Thank you for muting your microphones so we don't have any interference. You can choose your preferred language. We're going to start by with Fabio Salgado. He's a specialist in emissions about the relevance of networking. Welcome, and it is a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you, Luisa. 
welcome you all. Here we have an agenda today. I'm going to give you a context on the relevance of networking. Then we're going to have Mr. Carlos Gutierrez from the CAR of Cundinamarca with successful cases that in this regional corporation we have achieved in that province. Then after we're going to have Miguel Gonzalez, entrepreneur. Mrs. Viviana Alvarez is going to make a presentation of conversion. And uh, then after we're going to have innovation with architect Joanna Navarro, president of Industrial Tecnoarcillas. And finally, Mrs. Mrs. Maria, Maria Fernanda Torres from the Autonomous Regional Corporation of Corpo Boyacá, another province in Colombia, which had a reduction in particulate emissions in the city of Sogamoso. Welcome again. So the topic is the relevance of networking in the entrepreneurial environmental cooperation CAEM, we have always promoted associations, the relevance of being associated entrepreneurially and nationally. So the concept of this new reality we are immersed in, we are are being affected at the entrepreneurial level. It is important that Colombia mitigate all the negative impacts because of COVID-19 and the pandemics in general, in production and in execution. So it is evident that to achieve these objectives, it is important to have articulated work with entrepreneurs, academy, civil society, and authorities in order to work together and uh, come uh, forward to reactivate Colombia with employment and with new economic activities and retake the new normality, the new normal. It is important also to consolidate the production in order to formalize, have better entrepreneurs, better employment, strengthen education and human talent. In that sense, and in this corporation, we have identified certain entrepreneurial tools that not only affected all, this is a diagnosis on how the affectation was in change of paradigms, protocols of biosafety, uh, self-care for our uh, employees and ourselves, uh, maximum uh, uh, training, autonomous work from home, what is the market after these pandemics? How's the movement of a sector in ceramics and brick making in this case? What is the construction sector? How is it moving? So we need to evidence how the sector is, what new materials are they being required, requiring? What is the market of these materials? And uh, how is housing and buildings? Because new apartments, new housings, buildings, constructions need to have a certain space for people to work from home and accept this new reality. The necessary financial support, of course, if they need uh, financial support for these changes, this is important also to keep it. Transitions of uh, management of websites, applications, internet web-based uh, work. This is a change of paradigm and we need to try to sell our products in networking, social media, uh, be known through other media and public-private activities that uh, do promote associations and uh, obviously the relevance of having a representative and a leader that represents a sector before environmental authorities, Ministry of Environment in this case. It is important to have this uh, spokesperson what is an entrepreneurial network? It is a mechanism of association between small, middle-sized entrepreneurs where there's autonomy, where willingly they decide to participate, how to join efforts jointly in uh, pro of obtaining a common goal. So we 
are aware autonomously, we decide join together with other entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter if each have their own productive process, their own company, or their own entrepreneurial activity. The message is that the entrepreneurial network is a mechanism of joint work in order to move forward in an adequate manner, moving the sector, in this case, brickmaking. The relevance of networking one important thing is competitive advantages of small medium-sized businesses. This is focused in the small producers. They cannot control the whole external affectations, climate change, for example, uh, markets formality. These factors, uh, don't, they don't have a robust work. They don't have access to technology permits work. So through this association activity, they could receive the support between experts or other corpus of knowledge so that they can uh, cope with that barrier, it, uh, it uh, promotes links between companies. It is important, it is necessary that in the network and through collaborational work, we need to identify other stakeholders or players that could have other projects or programs that could strengthen them, that could give them education, give orientations where to go, where to work in pro of a better productive, efficient sector. Entrepreneurs start alone, but as they grow, it is more difficult. Entrepreneurs notice that they cannot be experts in everything. So it is necessary to generate other stakeholders networking so you can embrace other topics where you're not very strong. For example, marketing, financing, supply and supply chain. This is a systemic focus approach. And this is uh, better for entrepreneurial development and uh, it is important for all of the industries receiving these benefits. Benefits of networking that we have identified in KM. It improves sales, of course, evidently with better channels of distribution. When you have networking and a joint work, we can have better marketing. A marketing where you have standard better prices, where there's no disloyal competence. So you have better sales. You increase uh, distribution channels, as one experience told us, entrepreneurs uh, that are not on the way where the trucks go by or uh, brick uh, ceramic material transporters, they have certain sales points where people see them and they have uh, the idea, possible customers have the idea of how to acquire how to move the market since they are away from a, a hardware store or possible distributors of your products. This generates uh, these channels of distribution and marketing. Uh, fairs, of course, participate in events is also another channel for product presentation. Because of pandemics and lockup, it is important uh, not to go, but uh, you have virtual access to that. You also could have a stand or a place to present your products, a reference point for you to be acknowledged. And people going to that event, uh, they could know your product and a associative channel associated to brick making. In general, this reduces costs by joint purchases or wholesale purchases in fuel, for example, raw materials, technical advice, measurements for all these topics that you need jointly, you uh, could reduce costs, increase production capacity, volume, receive the support for from other institutions. It is easier for an entity, a bank, for example, or other organizations that promote projects and programs have a spokesperson that have a has a significant entrepreneur amount, so they have a better impact and know the baseline or who are working in this product, and financial education. So this goes beyond, beyond sales. 
It could have a triple impact. It is not only economic impact, but also environmental, social, and all these companies have a positive approach before the community, improving their life quality, generating employment in the area, increase uh, uh, several actions that could uh, be achieved through this topic development. What are the barriers identified to generate these networking or associations? Isolation, uncertainty in the process, uh, prevention before risk, uh, mistrust or no trust, learned lessons that are not learned or they don't know they exist. It is important to generate empathy between all in order to work together. It is important, it is necessary, and this is a barrier generated. Difficulties to share information and to coordinate actions. Lack of trust, non-compliance, or uh, other people could take advantage of my work. Distance, no coordination. So the idea is that entrepreneurs associated, interested in uh, doing these activities share approaches, uh, trust, share dialogue in order to break those barriers and meet each other. Willingness to invest in education, uh, evidently, as an experience in the northern of Santander province in Colombia, we apply the German methodology. Many entrepreneurs of the same area saw their productive processes each, and according to their expertise, they generated advice, recommendations for others to improve what they haven't seen before and other people saw. So it is important, uh, for example, in entrepreneurial emissions. One entrepreneur tells another entrepreneur what is the successful case to generate and what are the benefits, if it is positive or negative. And in that sense, generate discussions, mutual learning, because you entrepreneurs are the ones knowing, knowing, knowing they, you know your process. You're knowledgeable in your process. It is important to promote and uh, let others know your process. For the brick-making sector, we have achieved in several workshops and events we have generated for so many years now. We, in the brick-making sector, we have promoted activities, a research center, a training center, education center, that generates the capacities for entrepreneurs of brick-making that cannot access because of their size or they don't have a technical team within their staff. So, in that sense, it is important to have a, a research center that provides orientation on what type of fuel you could use, what is the raw material you could buy, what would be the best mix, uh, technical documents they could have in order to know successful cases in other countries, improvements, and other technologies that they cannot access punctually, but uh, they could receive the documents. Also, to generate trust, there's a policy of incentives of purchasing, for example, since the ministry, from the ministry and in the construction sector, they generate the trust with the entrepreneurial sector and they buy to associations, generate a consumption chain and generate certain circular economy innovation in products for new constructions in sustainability, uh, reducing environmental impact, air quality, water quality, and use of waste and debris. It is important to know the experiences of others, not only nationally, but internationally. For example, in the Clean Air Coalition, we have worked a lot with the Latin American network for the brick making sector, PANLAT. Uh, Mexican experiences, Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, and Colombia participated, and also some Asian countries. They do contribute to that mutual knowledge, and they generate experiences that stay in the entrepreneur, stay in the sector, in the public policy and decision makers. And of course, this generate uh, generates a pathway, 
generates a series of items to work with, and they are transversal for the whole brick-making sector internationally. Barriers and other activities that we have identified to overcome them, of course, evidently for, in, for associations, it is important to generate the culture, the reluctance, there is uncertainty, atomization of sector, individualistic mindset. So it is important to break those barriers, break those schemes, and uh, generate a network of network of trust, a trustworthy network. Probably there are entrepreneurs that don't know each other, and through discussions, they could have joint efforts. For example, the national brickmaking sector that uh, we organized in KM and uh, we organized experiences in the brickmaking sector, and we need to work together for a proposal. We promote a much more productive, sustainable sector. How to work in a network in the smallest uh, companies, the smallest entrepreneurs? As I told you, barriers and points we have uh, uh, we have found uh, is rivalry prices, high staff rotation. There are people, employees that don't last in a company. They go from one company to the other. There's no labor stability. And this generates informality, uh, standardization and innovation in products, and standardization in prices. This, com this competence makes the market not being the best for brick-making entrepreneurs. There could there should be a standard price, and from there, uh, there could be added value associated to the productive process. How to make this possible? How to help for entrepreneurs to associate and break those schemes? Uh, for example, sales, joint uh, activities, promotion and communication, something very nice we have identified through international experiences is that, for example, in Uruguay, association is so high that there's one day of the remaker. There's one representative in the, look, in the area, in the community. So they work uh, in the day of the clay maker or the brick maker. It is important to bring it, bring it to Colombia to highlight the, all of the efforts we have achieved for so many years in conversion and implementations. Availability of a uh, fiscal space for entrepreneurs who don't have the formalization of their mining titles. Or maybe they are in a very difficult, dark situation. It is important for them to receive their permits, their licenses, where to receive the exploitation of an area. From there, there could be feedback for all of the associated people or companies. Why not sharing a mining titles? Why not sharing the same emission permit? It is important to work this way then. Sales price and, of course, uh, reception area that articulates all of the brick-making products in one channel. As final, how to prepare people to work in a network, interdependence, establish links with others, recognize mutual work as a joint effort. It is important to have circular economy, uh, capacity of people, uh, willingness of entrepreneurs' expertise, uh, all other projects implemented, strategies to implement uh, their productive process. Why not let other entrepreneurs to know your process? Territorial development, coordination, commitment, investment, and consensus. So this is a work we've been doing in KM, and we have worked with many other auto environmental authorities that wanted to replicate this kind of work. And in order to pass our guests today, they're going to tell you a little bit more about their, exper their exper experiences, their association processes, networking, environmental authorities, jointly work, joint work. So I pass the floor to engineer Carlos Gutierrez from the Cundinamarca Autonomous Regional Corporation. 
So I pass the floor to Ingeniero Carlos. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Entrepreneurial Environmental Corporation. This is an important event for us. I'm going to proceed to share my screen in order to watch my presentation I have today for you. No sé si me confirma si se puede ver la presentación, qué pena. No, señor, todavía no, ya la estamos... Todavía no se ve, todavía no se ve. Listo, ya puedes compartir, ingeniero Carlos. Ah, perfecto, ahora sí ya. Listo, sí, señor, perfecto. Ahora sí, ya la pueden ver. Listo, muchísimas gracias. Bueno, mi nombre es My name is Carlos Gutierrez. Gutierrez. Currently, I'm a leader in the research group in the Cundinamarca Regional Autonomous Corporation, CAR. CAR. And I'm going to tell you some actions and results we have achieved uh, in lab and environmental innovation related to the brickmaking sector in Cundinamarca province. It is important to uh, repeat the Fabio's word when he saw the idea of articulating academic research, work in the foundations of research, development, and innovation in such a way that projects and likewise results have the guarantee and the support of the scientific method. We're not improvising. We're trying to work in results, evidences that we have in a territory, starting from a baseline. We're not sponsors of mandating, forcing people to adapt to technologies. We try to have the territory, territory telling us from their features and properties what is best favorable and what would be the best way to start working. So execution is minimum. During the past years, what we have seen uh, through the several inventories of atmospheric emissions, we've seen that this corporation has also attempted to, to do these measures, and they have indicated that one of the main pollutants in our jurisdiction corresponds basically to particulate material and punctually one part of those, one critical part of us, those emissions correspond to economic activities related to refractive aircraft, ceramic products, including the brick-making sector. Additionally, it's important to keep in mind that uh, one of the activities that somehow contribute to pollution is derivated mostly for the high consumption of coal as a fuel that is used somehow in these processes. From that evidence that have, has been collected and we have inventories and studies in our lab library, we focused in the formulation of certain projects that used research innovation in such a way that we provide alternatives to improve this problem. Fixed sources uh, we studied in the corporation and they are supported in the measurement of the necessary information. So the purpose of these projects is the one we want, trying to focus those efforts in areas that somehow are known by many of us, and where we have fixed our initiatives, for example, Tausana and Emocon, and rural areas in Mochuelo in Bogota. Basically, I present what is the Laboratory Environmental Innovation Direction. For those who don't know it, it is in Mosquera Municipality. 
It is one of the directions being part of eight in the corporation in that province. And it has several methodologies, processes that allow us to validate and monitor, for example, water, gas, uh, and we are supported. One of the offices supported as a research center. And we're going to install this as a management system. Basically, for you to know, this is an example of the analysis stations we work with punctually in the scenario of fixed sources. Currently, we're using equipment to sample isokinetic, uh, isokinetic exam samples for sulfur dioxide and uh, OX, making measurements with uh, admissible the standards to comply with several uh, criteria. NOx, CO2 in industrial activities that currently have that problem as fixed uh, sources of emission as the case of brick-making sector. This is for you to know our equipment and materials. These are the same equipment and materials we have for research projects. Same equipment that we have in the lab direction for research fields. Day by day, we acquire more, more equipment, more materials, more insumes. In a given moment, this is going to let us having the best equipment there are. So our projects, research projects and monitoring executed have the standards that somehow are accepted internationally. Basically, within the measurements, the use uh, methods, in accordance with the characteristics of emissions, we use promulgated methods by EPA. In this slide, I want you to see what we have credit for until 2019 and in 2020. We are. So we had to. It changed the possibilities of completing the accredited methods as we budgeted before pandemics. Basically, we have uh, activities for many years in our lab. Somehow, we built our characterization baseline. We take the inventory, emission inventory made by, for, by CAR in 2018, and we noticed in terms that basically within our sample, within our jurisdiction, this is focused in five, six regions, municipalities, Suacha, where we find 18 fixed sources, Bogota, Calera with 45, Ubate 1, Sabana Certro 51, and High Magdalena 6. In that sense, what we do is from those regional directions and uh, other areas, we checked and uh, we made a ma particular material analysis per ton year in such a way that we prioritize what was happening. What we found as a result is basically that we have 121 out of the brick-making people or companies. They are categorized within those five regionals. And the most important is that in articulate period, they correspond to the one year activity they correspond so when we analyze basically uh, because of method involving the scientific method we run some pilot standard projects and uh, we check results that could be replicated in criterial zones in this way, for you to have an idea, we have basically what we have the jurisdiction of CAR, we have fixed sources, 
for industrial activities we have identified eh, Sabana Centro, Sabana Occidente, Soacha, High Magdalena River, and obviously Pogota Capital District and Calera Municipality. Keep it in mind the rural area, which is the jurisdiction of CAR. So in this chart, we see the distribution density in of industrial activities that are deemed as sources, polluting sources, and they are the ones we have determined to continue with the project. What did we do? Somehow, through this inventory of atmospheric events, uh, atmospheric emissions, we identified particular materials where a majority in this jurisdiction. We identified a main uh, principal economic activities of that particular materials. In that sense, we noticed that the ceramics and brick making, uh, glass making, generates most of the problem. Use of coal as a fuel, as a source of fuel, is one that presents the one allowing this majority and our relevance, it provides us with certain reasons. There are other sectors all this can be found working together with universities in order to identify, but not only identify, but uh, proposals of alternatives of this uh, activity management. In research and uh, development, we are focusing in two special projects. The first one is techno reconversion based on the economic environmental characteristics of the brick making sector association as of Halat. As of Halat, they opened the doors to us. They have the intention to work with us. They are located. Uh, Itausa and Nemocol municipalities. Uh, affectation of uh, atmosphere around uh, in the El Mochuelo area in rural uh, Bogota, together with Anapalco, which is the National Association of Ceramic Brickmaking Sector and construction materials. And lastly, we're working formally in launching the first plan of action for air quality management focused in fixed sources, particular material in Ciudad Bolívar. We're going to see it afterwards. In the first project, it is the technological reconversion based on the social, economic, and environmental characterization of the brick sector in association of clay brick and miscellaneous manufacturers of Tausan and Moconas of Alat. Many projects reach uh, just a big source, but we, the, we want the three strategic lines and we do it within the sentence of the Bogota River, which is, this is the first project we started working with an association, which is also Falat. And somehow, this is project being born from us. They work together with us. And this project has four phases. A uh, pollutant uh, analysis was done and uh, they built a pilot project and change technology in the territory and apply technology in the territory, guaranteeing that the technology being built and being delivered fulfills, complies with the minimum standards. In feasibility and uh, punctual areas of the territory, it was a project that was structured for three, and uh, we have advanced. And this year, basically, we have of dispersion, the fibers and uh, basically what we saw is that the pollutants generated in the area for brick making they don't stay on the area they stay for some hours 
they are suspended in air on the influence area, but basically with the pass of time, they displace to the mountains and uh, selected natural areas. That's why basically that was the starting point to see the affectation area that allow us to identify the emergencies to work in a coordinated manner in case there's a direct action against populators, inhabitants. inhabitants. This is what provides us our model. This, the dispersion model somehow all, not all the pollutants are a product of this association. You know, as an association, they have other activities in the year. They have this is part of the the other sources that are part of the sector, but they don't per, uh, belong to the association. You can see here, we have also models, discriminated models for PF10, carbon monoxide and nitrogen monoxide to see the influence and behavior individually. And we concluded it is basically the same no matter the pollutant we are analyzing. Somehow, we need to keep in mind that PM10 is the one that focuses attention that in environmental health and affectation to individuals, it is the bigger. In social economic uh, characterization, we went to work with a group of people, tools that allow us to have general information, technical information, type of kiln, motivation to change, uh, motivations of the people, the audience, typology of our productions, environmental information, pollen dispersion report, and uh, all of the activities present there. For that, we made a tool that has some questions. We were able to use uh, 44 corpus as sources of pollution with a total of 24 items of analysis. The biggest uh, we identified uh, protected areas. The sources uh, work with in that association. They made as a session. In the second uh, photo, you watch the protected areas, the Bogota Moor, Guargua, the Green Lagoon, which is a moor in uh, in America, where initially this affects this particular material These pollutants are moving to biological farms. It's important to have the general characterization in that territory, and this is what we wanted to present. The most important evidence has been a type of kiln. 82% of that area, they have a sleepy fire, dormant fire kilns. Other kilns, uh, circular ones, within age, 45% of us, and 26% between 30 40, 40 of this ancestral activity, which is the main activity that the as an environmental management plan, they didn't have a, an environmental plan. 
72% of the miners don't have a title. Somehow they don't have a license to exploit uh, or uh, to reduce emissions. They 44% don't have that permit. If the industry was created before 2018 in regulations, the regulations change. It is a reflection. And this is what today we have with the new normal. In two, three months, there could be changes. So it is important to assess areas and in the process of construction. We need to be strict in measurements. In a moment uh, where the construction was made, that's bias or the baseline where we're going to determine the structure. Uh, and uh, it is obvious uh, motivations to change. The motivation for most of them it is product quality and economy. Modifications in uh, the natural structure of the kilns, it was based on the combustion system. Many of those did not pass these arguments of having that uh, tall. Uh, in chimneys, those who have a duct are very few, and others don't have a duct. They have technological characteristics that uh, they have to monitor by eye, with the naked eye, and the shape of the... They were made at the beginning uh, as a system in order to evacuate gases and pollutants due to the activity. But in infrastructure, it is required to have certain changes. In environmental health, what we want is the type of, com of fuel. Most of them use coal. Uh, periods of uh, kiln is turned on. At the moment of starting a kiln, it is the moment when uh, there are many pollutants being produced through this productive process. I uh, continue with the burning of a coal and the burning of the ceramic products. This is the difference in closeness from housing to the industry and industry to the housing. And collection of solid waste is on the head of MMA. So we started designing a pilot in the association. They somehow, with us, we sat, we designed. The idea was to create a different design. As you know, territories are different. They have different characteristics, so you cannot apply a standard design. We need to modify and adapt. The important was to have studies where uh, trying to implement technologies that have worked overseas 100% without the modifications. They haven't been successful because they don't fulfill the needs. They don't comply with the characteristics required by aircraft people. And in costs, it is not feasible that uh, the aircraft people have to sell their own houses in order to have a kiln. We believe that's important. So their presentation, they need to have and they, what they're looking for. We wanted to fight. We wanted to achieve in that sense, the kiln has to fulfill the generated uh, bricks as the main uh, piece, and since the order of them, they could work with coal. Coal had different characteristics initially. Uh, was best fuel, and they started to build a model that worked with coal. There's uh, agricultural activity also. We cannot uh, intend that the whole activity is agricultural or uh, different activity, in this case, brick making. You know, profitability is not uh, equal for uh, 
brick making or agricultural activities. In that sense, this is a supporting activity, but not the intention never has been to replace the whole brick making activity for agricultural procedures because it doesn't compensate. This is predicted by studies where that were already done. So, uh, certain prototypes of kiln were pro pro proposed. There was a uh, mining special title for, and, uh, because of autonomy. The same association acquired and adapted and built the kiln prototype that was defined to be achieved. The, basically, this is an environmental ecologic kiln. It is named prototype. Uh, it is kind of a Hoffman, but it's not real Hoffman. What is the good of this kiln? It is not built. The, it has not been traded with because it is a mix of several methodologies without being Hoffman, but it has certain characteristics of Hoffman. So it attaches to the proper conditions of the terrain. So they have the characteristics required by the, by the regulations to make measurements, the height, where to make the measures. This is the interior, this is the exterior of the new kiln, the Hoffman Craft prototype. So the burning, emission burning, or burning on emissions, uh, a very good change could be achievable. Uh, six days the burning would last. It reduces two days. It saves six, six days of activity. They say this way, the ability, the capacity of those kilns, initially they were for 3 to 40 tons, 10,000 more units, and the coal used, they passed from 13 tons to 8 tons. Basically, as they say, they make up to 240 million. In that sense, we are in 2021 in optim optimizing the kill. In this regional uh, autonomous corporation, we do monitor uh, punctual measurements uh, to achieve a uh, kiln that complies normativity, complies regulations, and most importantly, that works for them and could be replicated by the association. In this case, we're looking for other alternatives that allow us to co finance, to co -finance. Uh, the idea is to build four more kilns, and the idea is to cover, supply that need that uh, was carried, be, being carried out uh, in a very bad economic or environmental conditions. The second project we have is the one speaking on the level of affectation in the close areas, in the industrial uh, corridor of Mochuel Industrial Belt. We're doing with the Anafalco Association. What we've done is phase one. We made the inventory. Somehow, it's uh, necessary to see what they comply with, what they don't. So, in the second phase, was to have a dispersion model of pollutants to identify, identify the trend of dispersion based in fixed sources in the brick-making industries. So with this model, we are joined with TANISA and NEMOCO municipalities, and we determine where pollutants go. Why do you need that, do that? Well, we don't not only have the goal of mitigating emissions, we want to try to embrace the level of affectation on others, economically, socially, and financially, so we could have an integral project. And a knowledge transference, we generate the plan, development plan. We spoke by the first time in this region. In this region, there's no action plan to improve air quality in certain brick making companies. And this is what we tried to do with, together with Anafalco. This is basically 
that's the final, final the final model, the model of dispersion, dispersion model, where we can notice that basically these components go to other zone uh, planning units, UPZ. They are mostly affected where we're going to strengthen our, our actions. So somehow companies do their job and authorities also do theirs. Local authorities, major's office, uh, same sectors, private sectors, we can have actions and responsibilities. We had 21 entities. In April, we're going to start the action plan. We already have the documents. We're going to officially mark. This is certain that uh, through the CAEM and through the joining efforts, we're going to mitigate those efforts that are working for decades. And we can. This is an inflection point for the air quality topic. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, ingeniero Carlos, por tu presentación. Realmente valorar mucho el trabajo que desde la Corporación Autónoma Regional se está haciendo para el sector. Eh, realmente es re para resaltar y muchas gracias, ingeniero, por toda la, la, la charla y, y, y la experiencia desde la Corporación Autónoma Regional de Cundinamarca. A ustedes por la invitación. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, recordarles también a todos cualquier inquietud o pregunta que puedan tener, con todo gusto en el chat pueden plasmarla y le haremos respuesta por ese medio. Eh, bueno, comentarles también y agradecerles y, y mandarle un gran saludo a todas las personas que nos acompañan en la sesión. Tenemos alrededor de 26 personas. We have 26 people connected, people from the coffee growing area, Cartago, Nepal, Uruguay, uh, from Huila province in Colombia. Thank you for your company, for being present in this finance session. Next, we're going to have the presentation of Mrs. Uh, Viviana Alvarez. She's going to give us their experience of reconversion in their company. Good afternoon, you all. I sent the presentation and the recording of the presentation of Mrs. Viviana Alvarez that was not possible on the session of uh, conversion of brick making factories. So we continue with her presentation. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, you all. Good afternoon. Thank you for the kind invitation uh, you made to let us let you know uh, the conversion we made in our brick making factory. So, my name is Viviana Alvarez. I'm the manager of a family company that is a brick-making company. We are located in Quindío province in Colombia. We are located in uh, an area that uh, is mainly coffee growing producers. This is declared by UNESCO the mankind uh, heritage in uh, 2011. So we have a company with a chimney, with a mining uh, component in a territory that is declared as the mankind heritage. That's why our industry is highly committed, because we are in a region that uh, doesn't have the brick making vocation or mining vocation. We started a process of conversion in 2010 because we wanted to be a very highly differentiated company. We wanted to work in environmental issues. We wanted to have sustainability in our aspects of economy and social and environmental. So this uh, helped the life quality. We were concerned about the life quality of the community we had in our surroundings. We are located in a rural area, and we were concerned about our neighbors. How were we in that moment? Well, we were a small, medium-sized business, that, like many brick-making companies in the world. We were very aircraft-making. We had three kilns, 
They were pampa. Uh, they were open kilns. And uh, they had a direct atmosphere emissions. We didn't have a chimney. We didn't have awareness on those emissions, on those uh, emissions. This is the look. All these pollutions entered the neighbors. They are plant. It was very difficult to manage this. It was a uh, high impact for our employees, and we were concerned about that. In uh, uh, health and human safety and security, we had a component. We worked on some industrial security and safety. We worked with helmets, with gloves, but we didn't comply with each and all of the management integral system of work, labor, and health, safety, and security. Not all employees were directly hired by the company, so not all had the same social security system. They didn't have uh, a undefined term contract. The kilns were loaded inside, and we had natural drying. We only dried in open air. We didn't have a drying chamber that allowed us to make a better negotiation with construction companies. So we sold our materials as it was made in the plant without having or aspiring to have uh, very good big projects, uh, construction projects in the region. Moreover, our fuel was coal. This is this was the fuel. We had to bring coal from other regions of Colombia that were located far away from our plant. We brought coal from Cundinamarca, Boyacá, Antioquia. So we had to go a long run in order to bring that fuel into our plant. And we had manual feeding. That coal uh, was shoveled into the kiln. Nowadays, we look like this. We started conversion process. Initially, we visited many plants in the area, in the region, to adapt our conversion system into our needs, our requirements, our production capacities, and the investment we had to do because we didn't have external financing in order to make those modifications. So what we started was we had a drying chamber where uh, this allowed us to dry bricks on uh, clay products in a faster manner. It worked with kind of a small fire where we use coal, two tons of coal to dry in order to guarantee more production and have better access to better negotiations with our customers. Afterwards, the second we did was to make the conversion of the first kiln. It was converted with a chimney and a platform. That conversion was made by covering the kiln, reinforcing, uh, reinforcing the, the roof, the walls, and the whole kiln. And then after, we built a roof and a chimney. After making the closing of that kiln, we made a provisional chimney in order to do the trials on the behavior of taking out those emissions into the atmosphere, but with a chimney that was temporary. <coughs> the second kiln was converted. This is the drying chamber. 
that uh, we built and allowed us to dry bricks in a faster manner without uh, leaving aside the natural drying. And this is the structure we started using for the kilns. It is called vault kiln. This second kiln was closed by a vault. The first one, uh, we made uh, changes in the second roof. When we finished this uh, second uh, conversion of the second kiln, that we made also an additional chimney to see the behavior of the emissions into the atmosphere, we had to re reinforce the roof of the kiln one because it didn't work. We made uh, a structure like this one, and uh, we started conducting between the two kilns in order to have just one chimney. When we finished this conversion of the two roofs, we started making ducts in order to take the fumes, the emissions, into just one chimney. So we made a better chimney. And uh, we had uh, now the operating chimney that is, the, this is the one that is working in that moment, in this moment. We worked this kiln and the third kiln we took a somewhat long time to convert it. This is a process that has taken 10 years. So we've made these changes small step by step because we didn't have enough money in order to do that kind of investment. It is a very big investment for us. It is a very big conversion made with our own resources, with what we produce and with what we know on construction what we considered it was a conversion, a good conversion for our capacities and for our factory because we didn't have the resources in order to hire an advisor, an expert, an architect, a, an engineer in order to tell us how to do these things. Then this has been like uh, what we've done in changing, converting our factory in people we hired uh, legally now formal legal contracts with our people. We have contract with all social benefits, all social security. And uh, now we have a better integrated system of safety and security at, at work. After converting the two first kilns and making the first chimney, the whole the integrated chimney, we bought this fuel injector into our kilns. And it was a big, a spectacular change because uh, it reduced the burning. The exposure of opera operators had uh, to do this by hand. And now it was a great relief, the physical loads that they didn't have to do with this uh, injection system. Burning was better. The quality of burning was better. And of course, uh, there was a saving in emissions and in fuel used for burning. As we told you, we implemented the safety and security health at, at work in 2014. It was a system implemented in 2014 with all quality and all requirements required in Colombia for an integrated management system like this. This brought into the plant an amount of improvements in our installations, in our facilities, because we implemented these uh, unsafe conditions we had in our plant, in engines, for example, in motors. There was a uh, risk of trapping, falling, are risks that were uh, improved in stairs, in places where we have to go and walk. We made a lot of improvements inside our production plant. We marked the whole plant. We protected uh, the unsafe areas. This was an enormous change in our plant. And in complementing our management system, all the staff adapted to this new way of working. It wasn't easy to tell you sincerely, people was not used to work with boots. They liked to work 
all the time uh, without helmets. Uh, they didn't use uh, face masks. Face masks. So they were trained. They were uh, aware, and these people uh, got used. And nowadays, they are all adapted to these new conditions of work. One of the biggest changes we made in our conversion was substituting fossil fuels for biomass. This is an enormous change in our production system. This biomass is used because we have it in our region. This is the waste of the biggest industry in the region, which is coffee industry. And uh, biomass is available in our area. We don't have to go long wrong. We don't have to transport it. We don't have to spend a lot of money in coal, in transportation. And moreover, our emissions were reduced a lot. Burning is cleaner. This was a gigantic step in our conversion process. Then, when uh, we enter into projects that uh, we work with CAIM, they helped us a lot to find solutions to the rest of conversion processes that we required because we didn't finish our conversion process yet. So we had international experts that supported us in order to successfully finish a conversion process that we started and it works well in our production plant. With CAIM, we entered in the project of uh, black carbon mitigation and other pollutants re mitigation. We were selected to do reviews with our biomasses. We used uh, guadua wood and coffee waste. We, uh, they grow in a region. We use more coffee waste than guadua wood waste because, well, coffee is a seasonal uh, seasonal biomass and it is difficult uh, to find it or it gets high prices so we have another biomass that is accessible in the area guada wood it is not easy to manage it in the kilns but uh, we work with it we also worked in energetic efficiency project it is called industry nama how to produce with uh, better efficiency in energetic uh, management, which is a big cost in our production process. So we closed during 10 years the process of conversion. First, the drying chamber, making the changes, the conversion in the three cleans, in the ki three kilns. We passed from Pampa kilns to to vault kilns and also we change our biomass for coal so we don't use coal anymore and now we use uh, uh, the waste of coffee or uh, waste of guadua wood which is cheaper and it works well in our kilns so we don't use uh, fuels anymore in circular economy, we work in the region, we take those wastes and we use it as a fuel in our kilns. So we are closing the cycle of production in coffee and guada wood with the problems and with the projects we enter with the CAIM. We implemented a program of efficient water use and saving, energy efficient use and saving, solid waste management. We have recirculation in our plant, and uh, we also reprocess more than 90% of the waste we produce in our plant. The idea is to have circular full economy and don't have any waste in our productive processes. We also had a program of burning an emission control system into the atmosphere, and this is good to reduce uh, emissions and greenhouse uh, gas effect that we are producing in our plant. And uh, 
we take the waste of the industries in the region. What have been the achievement? The greenhouse gases, we reduced those by the use of biomasses. We re mitigated black carbon. This is really important in our company. And uh, this project also helped us, gave us the tools in order to measure the carbon prints. We do yearly measurement in order to understand how we are behaving in the plant, if we are complying or not. We see the environmental indicators, which is uh, one of the most important things in our production processes. We have circular economy. And now we have a cleaner production. We have very little water consumption, almost dry production, because we have very good moisture environmental conditions. So we don't have to use a lot of water in our processes. These are some of the most important key performance indicators that we have implemented. This is the evolution of indicators. In 2011, for example, we made 132 points. In 2020, we had 108. Fuels that we used were, in 2011, we used coal, and in 2020, we used biomass. The difference is 50 or more percent. Tons produced per year obviously re was reduced because of COVID-19. We stopped during two months. In energy consumption, power consumption, we need to work a lot. And we're working because our plant is consuming. Uh, we have continuous improvement process. So we, we are consuming a lot of power. We have a big impact in electric power consumption because the working of the kilns into the drying area we used to use coal, and now we use it. Uh, we used uh, motors, and we used turbines. We uh, our power consumption increased a lot. Uh, in employees, in 2011, we had 13 employees, and now we have 18. With the carbon jet, we burn 30 hours in 2011, and we work in 24 hours, because in this moment, we have burns in 22 hours. And we have emission intensity that in 2011 was 0.32, and now we are 0.066. So our indicators are good in reducing emissions. We work also with the uh, World Sustainable Development Goals. We work in goal seven, uh, accessible, non-polluting energy, number eight, decent work. And uh, we also work in uh, uh, objective or goal number 12, uh, responsible production and consumption, goal number 13, action for climate or environment, and number 17, alliances to achieve objectives. We have uh, these goals, we work on those. We have a lot of alliances. We work uh, with different uh, allies. In these 10 years of work, in 2018, we received this prize by Positiva Insurance Company. It is a labor risk protection insurance company in Colombia. And we received the second position, the second prize for our labor safety and security management system. For us, it was incredible recognition because they were the ones that helped us to to be candidates for this prize because for these great changes we made in our production process. Uh, this was great. In 2019, we worked with the Fenalco Solidario Corporation and uh, with CAIM, we received all their prizes. And this year, not long ago, we received a ratification of that prize, that uh, social responsibility stamp. We received it from Fenalco Solidario Corporation and from Camacol 
uh, company, Kama, Kama, the Chamber of Commerce of Co or, and Construction, we received a prize in social responsibility in the category of environmental responsibility for our conversion project. In associations, this is part of this event that uh, summons us today, today. If we weren't associated and we didn't belong to these all associations, we weren't able to achieve what we have done so far. To be associated is really important. Associations represent the interest of the sector before state and private uh, entities. And also, this shows what's happening outside because they represent us, kept us, kept us uh, updated and challenge us to be better. They support us to participate in this type of projects where we are participated and we are going to continue participating. So this process continues, and uh, we're going to have always the goals of uh, continuous improvement. We are members of the construction chamber of the uh, province Quindío. We belong also to uh, Eje Arcillas. We belong to the coffee growing area and uh, north of Bali. Uh, clay makers and brick makers association. We work also with Quindío Competitivo. It is an associ a local association, a regional association. We are leaders of the cluster of brick making and clay making. It is Quindío Construye Verde Association. It is a cluster. We also belong to the regional circular economy of the region. And uh, this encourage encourage us to improve and participate constantly in this type of projects that gives us a lot of knowledge to be better every day. In public policy, we have the Brick Making National Association. With CAEM, we are part of the National Brick Making Association. And uh, this is important to sit with important stakeholders of other regions, other entrepreneurs, other brick makers of other regions of Colombia, and know about public policies, ministries, many sectors that for us are really important in order to be able to tell our experiences, to sit with them and see their problems, the problems in our sector, to be joined together and work for the sustainability of the brick making sector in Colombia. Another great step that we have taken is that we are the first local company and in the brick making sector nationwide in reporting a sustainability report under the GRI methodology. These reports are made by big companies in Colombia and the world. And we set a goal last year, and we were able to do this sustainability report. How we have uh, been able to grow, to see ourselves now, and not only tell our good and bad experiences, we tell also our challenges and the needs of improvement we have in our company, in our production processes. What are our entrepreneurial challenges? Innovate in products. We need to have innovation products. We need to be profitable. We need to innovate in processes because small, medium-sized businesses have very aircraft, very archaic processes. There are many manual processes, and we have great amount of costs, and we are inefficient in this type of businesses in order to reduce times and movements in our plants with the displacements that our operators have to do in order to take the bricks in order uh, in all of the areas of the plant. We need to optimize the drying areas because we don't take the best advantage of it because we don't have the shelves in order to to have a better space of storage. We need to implement transportation belts, work in energetic efficiency. We need to change our motors. 
renew our equipment because we have very old equipment. We don't have the resources to have state-of-the-art technology. And we are starting now the photovoltaic energy in our productive process. What are the challenges now we have in this small, medium-sized business? I see small, medium-sized businesses to achieve uh, not to be so stigmatized, not to be so pointed out that are friendly with the environment, that their workers, their human capital is in better condition. Companies that are not rejected for na by neighbors, by their environment, they need to be small, medium-sized companies that are leaders in conversion, change processes, in improvement, that give employment, formal employment, that are concerned to relate to all their stakeholders. I believe these are the challenges we have. They are the ones we have pass through towards sustainability and efficiency to take care of the planet. It is not an easy path. It is not a rose path. But in 10 years today, we see the results. We've done the UK brought this into reality. And we continue improvement. It is really important then to be associated, affiliated to an association because you can have synergies. You learn from others because you see a landscape outside your company. Managers of small, medium-sized companies, most of us are just focused in our day-by-day -day problems, and we don't see the outside. And this is a big mistake of small entrepreneurs. We don't have the opportunity to see what's happening outside. And this is as allowed by associations. You require interest, commitment, and conviction of the leaders of companies. If it is, if you don't do this, you cannot carry on with this process because it is not in your head as manager, as boss, as owner. If you don't implement these actions, you cannot transfer all these ideas to your organization, your members, your departments, all of the levels of your organization to continue and implement these kind of topics as it should be. You need to have a holistic view, and it needs to be an expanded view beyond what's happening inside the organization. As I told you, you need to see outside. Because if you look only on your navel, you don't see what's happening outside. And uh, the most important thing of the brick-making sector in Colombia is emissions. We all live in the same house that is called planet Earth. And we need to be aware that we need to do important changes in our productive processes in order to have a better impact. To do these investments, you need money. And small, medium-sized businesses don't have enough financing as required. And this is a big problem we have. Another thing is that projects uh, leave many improvement ideas, many plans of improvement, many required a uh, few resources, but the biggest improvements require a lot of money. And many times, you cannot achieve that because you don't have the resources to do those changes. This is a call for action, a call of action. So the future implementations, projects that you carry on for small, medium-sized businesses have this component, not only leave projects that are important inside an organization, but also try to be able to get resources so these projects turn into reality and are implemented and have impact uh, in the organization. And companies need to find advice, good, reliable advice. When we started this project with CAIM, we received good advice from experts because small, medium-sized businesses many times don't have the resources and they invest 
with advisors that maybe don't know much about the finances, the way of operation. They charge a lot of money and they don't know how to do things. So these advisors, you need to be careful in choosing your advisors and high respect experts as the ones of kind that help us, that support us. And in any decision, they help us to do it. And it is a blessing for entrepreneurs. That's why I feel that my company, La Campana Brickmaking, has been blessed for participating in kind projects with good advisors and experts as the ones we have available through kind because they are unconditional at the moment we need to work with them we know that this indicator is really important 96 percent of small medium size uh, companies are in colombia and we need to change that. We need to be small, medium-sized businesses that fulfill, comply with each and all of requirements that are required legally, laborally, taxably. It is important then to be able to turn into very good legal, sustainable companies. This project has been possible thanks to CAIM and the Clean Air Coalition. We want to continue participating in these kind of programs and projects and make our region to be known and renowned for making different good things. Our companies need to do different good things. We believe alternative energies are a very important step in the brick making sector. And many regions are, have not the regional resources. I believe the industry in the world and the brick making sector in the world need to seek for alternatives, for alternative energies in order to change the way of production because we cannot disregard the issue of climate change in the world. Thank you very much to you for this kind of invitation and we are committed with uh, environmental sustainability and our social economies in our region. Thank you very much. The architect Joanna is going to make her presentation. Good morning, you all. Thank you for your kind invitation. My name is Joanna Navarro. I am an architect, representative of the industrial clay making sector in Duarcilla in north of Santander province in Colombia. We're going to share the work we've done. It is, uh, I'm the leader of the association since the past year with all this new normal. It's been a challenge for me. I'm going to turn off my video and I'm going to share my screen. The challenge, uh, what has happened, we have had uh, some changes. So basically, what we've done in these times, this is uh, figures in the clay sector, in the brick making sector. The contribution of our activities is 8 to 12 percent GDP, 54 companies in this sector in uh, that area of Santander. We represent 4% of exports in Colombia and 107 are exporters in the region. Sales are around 8,000 million pesos. And we generate 3,000 direct and 5,000 indirect employments. These are the industrial figures in that area, north of Santander. 
asociados. They are not all eh, associated. Bueno, eh, básicamente, los logros que se han hecho desde el 2012, Achievements cuando empieza we, todo ese tema de, de eh, arcillas competitivas. Uh, 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 we have competitive uh, clay making. This is a program channeled through the Chamber of Commerce of Cúcuta. That's why we have a cluster of clay for construction. They are retaking new challenges with the Impulsa program, which is a public program in Colombia. We work uh, certifications and quality management. NTC ISO 9000. La certificación en, 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 en la paz certification and PACSC and corporate image. That's why we have new identity, Arcillas Competitivas, Competitive Place, through Colciencias and Innovation Agreements. We have an alliance in the Chamber of Commerce of Cúcuta, innovation for 14 companies in the clean making sector, and innovation projects uh, to increase the proposal. Do it now for two companies. With competitive phase, we have three projects. The one is lean manufacturing for the clay making sector where we created strategies of training, diagnosis of efficiency and productiveness. Another achievement is access uh, to energetic efficiency for the clean making sector, where we achieved a uh, the ISO uh, 50,000 realized by 20 companies on training uh, in uh, energetic management systems. Access to international markets for two companies of the sector. Central America, which is the strength of our region. And through a program that is called uh, Bank Oldex Confe Cameras, that is called Produce More, we have a productive strategy for 10 companies of that clay making sector with a methodology of analysis and problem solving. With the past of years, we have increased entrepreneurs participating. We have associated entrepreneurs at the moment before entering uh, the pandemics. I received the presidency uh, with uh, 10, 000, uh, a thousand entrepreneurs and we associated eight more. So at the moment we are 27 companies associated in competitive play. Our achievements in the association have had an impact. There's no discussion that sector needs to make changes, very urgent changes in environmental management, because we are ru uh, ruled by Corponor, which is equivalent to CAR, C-A-R. So this year, we achieve a great step. In this moment, we achieved reducing the compensation rate payment, basically industrials uh, before 2008, 2008 had to pay 16.9 minimum wages to work in clay sector. They receive uh, one to three kilns. Now industrials have to pay only 1.5 uh, minimum monthly wages, four to eight uh, uh, kilns, three minimum wages, nine to 12 kilns, five minimum wages, 13 uh, and on, have to pay 7.2 uh, minimum wages for permits, licenses, and everything. Also, commercial activities has been very important for the association. Our participation uh, since 2012 to 2019 
has been one of the strengths of this association, being uh, very participative in fairs and uh, commercial exchanges. Keeping in mind that since 2012, we have closed our borders with Venezuela. So uh, commercial activities has been difficult and we had to make interesting products for the Colombian national market. It is there where we started with different activities. We go since 2015 improving processes, being more competitive nationwide, retake colors, uh, new products. We wanted to participate since 2015 in Expo Construcción, Expo Diseño, Colombian Fairs, Expo Camacol, 2016-2018, also the Colombian Congress of Construction 2014, uh, the macro round of business 55-57, with Pro Colombia and the Macro Rueda Centro America. We also went to commercial fairs to Miami and Chile. And the project that we are seeing is born in the region in alliance with other companies. Uh, it is a clay fair of construction, and we hope to retake uh, in a very near future. The challenges we have in the clay making in that area of Colombia, definitely it is, we have an environmental challenge. We need to make uh, an environmental activity. We need to be competitive in combustion. Standardize products to have a very good project. Access to new markets, the use of clay products. We have approaches with the Cucuta metropolitan area where they are implementing our products in very important projects, very innovative projects. In facades, uh, the use of products with other approaches. Roofing for facades, uh, architects of that metropolitan area are making those designs and everything that has to do with uh, uh, development of construction, atmospheric reduction. And, uh, we are having a diagnosis in order to replace all combustion systems and be more competitive in order to fulfill uh, the new world order that ask us to change. This year, we have the very serious intention, the industrial resources are open, that uh, applied research is our strength. So we are trying to to work environmentally as much as possible in North Santander province of Colombia for other associations is that uh, working jointly. This association could have a network in order to have a good impact in uh, new products dealing with uh, clay making. This is our presentation. Thank you very much. I leave you my contact details, uh, and I hope uh, you find this interesting. Thank you very much, Architect Joanna, for your kind presentation. It is important to recognize Asuarcillas, which is pioneers uh, in innovation, colors and uh, nuances, different uh, colors they have in their association products. In our agenda, we are having uh, problems with Mrs. Viviana. Now we pass the floor to Maria Fernanda Pro Torres from the Boyacá Autonomous Environmental Corporation, Corpo Boyacá.
for the, the pollution of the Sogamoso Valley in air quality. Eh, sí, ¿me están escuchando? Sí, señora, sí, señora. ¿Están viendo mi pantalla? Eh, no, todavía no, todavía no. Todavía no. ¿Ya? ¿La están viendo? No, señora. No. No, todavía no. Ya la estoy dándole compartir. ¿Ya la están viendo? No, no, señora, todavía no. Ya le di compartir. Rarísimo. No, todavía no, todavía no sale la, la compartida de pantalla. Dice... Espérenme un momento. Voy a tener. Cuando le das compartir pantalla, te sale una segunda ventana y te dice que, que pantalla compartir. Sí, le, le coloco pan, pantalla. Sí, sí, señora. Sí, ahí estoy. ¿Ya la están viendo? Está no, rarísimo. No, Dame un momento. Compartir. Porque si quieres yo tengo la presentación. Te la, pues, ah, por favor. Acá. Listo. Si quieres, sí, ah, sí, sí, perfecto. Videito. Mientras tanto ya, ya te comparto la, la presentación para que puedas presentarla. Perfecto. Los primeros ejercicios que hicimos en Anafalco fue la migración a tecnologías más limpias. Entonces pasamos de hornos baúl y de hornos locos a hornos colmena, Hoffman continuos y semicontinuos y a hornos túneles. Que, ¿Cómo disminuyen ellos la emisión de material particulado? Pues consumiendo menos carbón. Entonces eh, esa relación de consumo de carbón versus la producción de arcilla en un horno túnel es menor y eso nos va a permitir a nosotros generar menos emisiones de material particular. El siguiente paso, que pareciera que lo hicimos al, al contrario de como debía ser, pero el siguiente paso ya fue la implementación de las medidas de control. Entonces nosotros hemos implementado diferentes medidas de control, como lo pueden ser cámaras de sedimentación, eh, en la zona tenemos ciclones y ciclones húmedos, que nos han permitido retener material particulado y tenemos una de nuestras empresas que ya, digamos, ha avanzado en eso y tiene un filtro de mangas que podríamos decir que es el sistema de control más eficiente que hay en el momento para el, para el control de material particulado. Y en este último año hemos avanzado mucho en la conformación de micronizadores de carbón. Entonces lo que el micronizador hace es pulverizar el carbón, convertirlo prácticamente en un talco y ese talco ingresa al horno, lo que hace que todo el carbón se consuma, evitando como la salida de esas cenizas, que es el material particulado, y eso nos ha llevado a disminuir el consumo de carbón en un 20 al 25%, y en ese mismo sentido hemos visto que han bajado las emisiones de material particulado.
Again, good morning. We have the presentation of engineer Maria Fernanda. So we're going to share screen. Listo, engineer Maria Fernanda. Ya puedes. No sé si ves ahí nuestra pantalla. Sí, sí la veo. Perfecto. Listo, sí, señora. Bueno, mucho, mucho gusto. My name is Maria Fernanda Torres. I belong to the Regional Autonomous Corporation of Boyacá, Corpo Boyacá. Thank you for the invitation. We're going to tell the actions we have developed in the Sogamoso Valley for the, po the pollution, the no pollution. Why do we speak Sogamoso Valley? It is our industrial belt in Boyacá. In that area, we have uh, several types of industries in the same area. Sogamoso Valley is formed by one of the seven Colombian regions after Bogota, Medellin, Barranca, Cali, Barranquilla, Cartagena, where in 2012 it was graded, ranked as one of the most polluted areas because of generation of atmosphere, particulate uh, PM10 pollution. This is a photo of 2012 where we can see how the valley looked, the mixture of uh, the Sogamoso Valley, valley with the phenomenon of thermal inversion. Visually, you see kind of a fog, a layer on the whole valley. This valley is located in the central uh, part of the province of Boyacá in Colombia. We have several municipalities around. We have Sogamoso, Nopsa, Tibaso, Firavitova. These are municipalities in Boyacá province. This is rich wealth in geography. It is wealth, wealthy in mining, in uh, clays for construction products. These are some of the emission sources in Sogamoso Valley. We have the jurisdiction of Nopsa and Topaga, where uh, we have several companies. We have Paz del Rio Steel Making. Argos Cement Company, the uh, brick making, and uh, uh, we have 600 uh, kilns, 400 produced uh, uh, open mining, lime producing companies, lime, and other industries. These are the locations of in year 2013, this corporation seeing that problem, we started an inventory made by La Salle University. 46% of emissions generated came from the aircraft small companies. So they created several actions in exercising environmental authority in order to mitigate this type of pollution. First, we had meetings with the small, medium-sized companies. I mean, in the aircraft sector, we have uh, working meetings for compliance of their obligations under the environmental regulation. And together with this, we have the strengthening of air quality in order to how to reduce this pollution. So, uh, initially, 
in the meetings with the small sectors, we found several situations. One, they were located in places where the territorial organization plan did not allow to do to have these kind of industries. These small kilns don't ha don't have a capacity to demand on them an emission permit, an emission license, because these are very aircraft kilns, as has been said many times. These are dormant fire kilns. So there was a resolution, a legislation, where they organized all the whole aircraft sector in the brick-making companies to continue working and not affect their operations. So resolution 618 was issued in 2013. Uh, in 2013, the four ideas in that resolution was, first, all kilns need to be in uh, an authorized area in their municipalities. These kilns also had to change their fuels from coal to coke. This is not 100% 100% coke coal. 10% is used for starting the, the, the kiln and the rest is used with coke. Why coke? Coke coal, because it is easy access in Boyacá. Second, it has better energy, better power, and it continues with their burning. Third, these kilns had to be built with a kind of a chimney, passed from the dormant fire to a small beehive kiln. Fourth, those who wanted could make an association for techno conversion, for a bigger conversion. What happened? Well, many of those small companies associated, we have one case that they associated like 13 owners of these productive units and they built just one kiln, a Hoffman type kiln. So, in that specific case of the clay making sector in 2014 used we used to have 403 kilns the, after the resolution they passed from having 400 to 140 kilns 115 started the process of techno conversion with a chimney or, or a bigger kiln they had to fulfill the resolution and receive a license and the rest started a project of uh, eradication of polluting, polluting sources. This was aimed to those people that could not continue with the brick-making activity. Why do I tell you this? Because the use of soil could not allow them to have that kiln in that area. They were vulnerable people, elders, that did not want to continue making bricks or clay products. So, the pollution uh, in 10 years in their productive area they delivered their pills we didn't buy a uh, land we bought their kiln we demolished it and we certified emissions uh, in uh, greenhouse effects greenhouse gases Likewise, this corporation, in exercising their authority, monitored Resolution 618 and derived. So, verification of their fuel they are using. Also, I forgot, there was a pick and plate. Not all everybody could turn on their kilns. It was distributed at the same time, so they had to distribute per week. Every operation lasts about 10 to 12 days. So they can turn on their kilns Monday through Wednesday once a month. When we calculated, we noticed that while preparing the materials, while drying, while loading the kiln, they couldn't have one production a month. So that's why we define those periods. We made an inventory of production of bricks. We verified the projects of techno conversion. And with the air quality surveillance system, there was a reduction of 
uh, emissions levels of uh, particulate materials in that area. The project of uh, pollute uh, sources uh, was for people that could not continue with their activities. The first step was identifying users. So we went kiln by kiln, uh, identifying conditions, if it is possible for them or not, continue their activity, and they willingly they accepted the project. We demolished those kilns, reconditioned the land, and after that, we certified the reduction of greenhouse effect gases with Econtech, the uh, standard institution in Colombia. We include them in Bank O2. For them, we gave them 26 million Colombian pesos divided in four years. So they received kind of a subsidy for subsistence. This is the location of the productive beneficiaries. They were around the whole Sogamoso, Be uh, Sogamoso area, Sogamoso Valley. So the, this was the main reason. The pollution went to the valley, and that's why uh, the most productive areas were in the Sogamoso Valley. valley. With Ecotech certification, we noticed that out of 600 kilns that were working in Sogamoso Valley produced 1,700,000 tons of equivalent carbon in a period of 10 years. With the implementation of this project, we hope, we expect to reduce 500,000 uh, tons of equivalent carbon. And we run two verification uh, phases, two stages. One was 24,000 re uh, tons reduction January to June 2015, and the second was June 2015, June 2017. And they reduced 8,700 tons, more or less. These are the results of the uh, attain uh, activities uh, according to actions. In 2011, we had the same monitoring area point. This chart was, is a reference in one monitoring point always. We had 63 micrograms per cubic meter of particulate material, PMT, yearly. We were above the permitted uh, levels by standard. Yesterday, we have the yearly report of 2020, and we found that the average yearly in the same station for PM10, we are in 28 micrograms per cubic meter. Together with the actions performed as environmental authority, it was possible to notice a reduction of almost 50% of emissions produced in the Sogamoso Valley. Likewise, in order to demonstrate results, we have a station, a air monitoring network. In this moment, we have six automated stations. We operate those under the standard 17025. We are accredited by the Environmental Authority in Colombia to validate our data. We have all the quality criteria in order to issue these kind of reports. And we show the community the current status of their air quality in Sogamoso Valley. This is the location of our station, six stations. As you can see, we have covered the whole Sogamoso Valley, including Snopsa, Sogamoso, Belencito, the most critical areas. Where we measured six criteria, six items, PM10, P2.5, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, ozone, and uh, carbon monoxide. The most critical are PM10 and 2.5. We try to control 
that of uh, the early alarms. Uh, these stations allow me to see the air quality in real time. So we as Environmental Authority monitor continuously. Likewise, we are certified in uh, greenhouse gas reduction. Because of that, we created the Emission Reduction Regional Mechanism in Boyacá, MMRRE. This is an initiative joined by many big companies in pro of greenhouse gas reduction effect. Many companies are going to quantify their greenhouse gases, and they're going to create plans and projects to reduce those and uh, give better results in mitigation of climate change. Those are the actions that we carried on in the Environmental Authority in Boyacá in order to control emissions in Sogamoso Valley. As I told you initially, we were catalogued as one of the four belts that are most polluted in Colombia. And now we are not in that ranking. Thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions or inquiries. Thank you, Engineer Maria Fernanda. And uh, thank you, Corpo Boyacá. For any inquiries and questions, please let us know in the chat. We give you answers. Excuse us because Mrs. Viviana from Tebaida, Quindío, because of her location and connectivity, it was not possible to reconnect. Nevertheless, further in time, we're going to record her presentation. We're going to have translation and we're going to join it to the record of this webinar. Then after, we send uh, to you to, uh, through the memories of this event. Please excuse us for these technicalities. Thank you all for your kind participation, especially the people and colleagues from India, Bangladesh, Nepal, all of entrepreneurs that participated in these six sessions. Let us, please know that this is not the end. If you need any connections, any internal public policy contact, entrepreneur contact, please let us know. We're going to give you the, all of the information and details. Thank you for these six sessions. We hope these have been very useful to you. Let's hope the learned lessons of Colombia could be applicable in your countries. And all this process that we have built together is not only to strengthen competitiveness and efficiency in the brick-making sector, but also to continue positioning actions in pro of the environment. This sector has developed not only nationally, but also uh, worldwide. Thank you all for your kind participation, your collaboration your active questioning. Whatever you need, please let us know. Use our contacts. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Luisa. Thank you, all, all of the consultants. Because of pandemics, uh, they weren't present. They are in Zoom. Virginia, Sandra Villalobos, all of the professionals and attendants, guests, associations that were in these sessions, Ana Falco, Lusa, Azon Arcilla, Sejarcillas, uh, teachers, professors that helped us, the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, the Environmental uh, Development Department, Mrs. Jenny, Constanza, all those that have supported us with their presentations and their expertise. Maybe I cannot name all those. Thank you for your kind collaboration. We're open for any question, inquiry, correction to continue the transference process for our Asian partners. We invite you to our last sessions in the Clean Air Coalition that is scheduled in June. We wanted to present tools, guidelines, and consolidated results of these projects. The people of corporations, the regional autonomous corporations, Corantokia, Norte de Santander, Corpor Boyacá, all those environmental corporations that have joined us, not only in the National Brick Making uh, Association, thank you very much to you all. Thank you, people of CAEM, 
Our director, Mr. Henry Garay Sarasti, sends kind greetings for being participants of these scenarios. And as, a u as usual, please count on KM and these servants of yours. Thank you, you all. Have a good day. Uh, have a good night. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good afternoon, you all. My name is Virginie Ruiz Cañon. I participated with the project of Clean Air Coalition and Environmental Entrepreneurial Corporation, CAEM, to estimate the emissions of black carbon in Colombia in the brick-making sector, and also benefits and eco-benefits. I think it's been a very interesting project. We didn't stay just in the part of technicals. Go estimate statistics, values, number, if you do well, wrong, but also it allowed us to know a brick-making sector from many approaches, not only in terms of atmosphere emissions, but also in social and economic parts. This allowed us to know what are the strengths and weaknesses of that sector in their business chains, in their value chains, interactions with the communities their interactions with their employees, suppliers, even with their competitors. It was very enriching because not only we were taking only data, which happens with many projects, but also we were allowed to build an action pathway together by the brick making group association. It was a very nice, beautiful work because we built to improve. We have a very good, a clearer approach on what is going to be the pathway to follow in the brick making sector in Colombia that allow us to have better productivity, but also that is not against social, economical, and environmental activities in Colombia. I wanted to thank all these institutions for allowing me to participate in that project. It would be good to replicate this project in other type of sectors to generate more support and learn lessons in other activities like this. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for participating in these journeys of knowledge exchange where we all have learned, not only in the brick-making sector, but also from other sectors. I feel very proud and thank you very much for this opportunity of participating and enrich me and enlighten me with all your expertise and knowledge. I'm very certain we're going to meet up again. El Ministerio y el Gobierno colombiano decidió en el 2013 ser parte de la coalición del clima y el aire limpio, reiterando su compromiso con el clima y con la salud de los colombianos. Desde hace unos cinco años atrás venimos trabajando en unas mesas permanentes con el sector ladrillero que buscan generar conocimiento y articular acciones para mejorar la calidad del aire en torno a este sector productivo del país. Todo este tipo de programas nos ha llevado a que el sector ladrillero se organice y que los empresarios, pequeños empresarios artesanales, empiecen a, a aliarse y a trabajar hacia un mismo objetivo. Es tener un puesto en, en, una, en una mesa que se discute mucha, mucha problemática que tenemos a nivel nacional. Hemos podido crear sinergias entre cada uno de los gremios ladrilleros a nivel nacional. Hemos podido plantear sobre la mesa nuestras propuestas eh, en, eh, para el cambio de políticas públicas. Y qué eh, gratificante poder saber y poder co eh, conocer el contexto de nuestro sector a nivel nacional. El sector ladrillero en Colombia era una de las principales fuentes de material particulado que afectaba a la comunidad en temas respiratorios y cardiovasculares. Se reconoce el trabajo que ha tenido la CAEM, Corporación Ambiental Empresarial, que desde mucho tiempo atrás la iniciativa viene trabajando con el sector ladrillero y desde sus inicios ha aportado conocimiento técnico y nos ha permitido un acercamiento con personas en campo, con conocimiento y a través de identificación de tecnologías de reducción de emisiones. A partir de ese momento el ladrillero ha empezado a tener como un cambio de conciencia y de mentalidad de que es importante controlar las emisiones, pero además de eso eh, medirlas. 
pues todas las empresas estamos interesadas en, en tener pues, unas emisiones más limpias. Y... Las mediciones nos dan una información técnica que nos permite a todos hablar en los mismos términos. Sin mediciones estamos hablando en abstracto. Hemos, como país, reducido el número de eh, hornos artesanales y promovido que se generen mayores actualizaciones tecnológicas que se ven representadas en reducciones de emisiones contaminantes. Ya están empezando a construir chimeneas, a diseñar hornos como mejorados, haciéndoles de pronto una cúpula y dirigiendo todos los gases de la combustión a un punto, buscando la medición y el control. Es, es una manera también de cuidar la salud de, de la comunidad que está a nuestro alrededor, como la de nosotros mismos. Que nosotros como sector estemos más conscientes de la responsabilidad que tenemos y de, de los cumplimientos que tenemos que tener de la norma. El sector ladrillero que representamos es un sector industrial, formal, sometido a la ley en toda su extensión desde el punto de vista eh, de medio ambiente, de regulación económica. A nivel internacional se reconoce el trabajo de Colombia de la CAEM en materia de las mediciones y el trabajo técnico y científico que se ha dado con el sector ladrillero. Un agradecimiento especial a la Corporación Ambiental Empresarial, a la CAEM y a la Coalición de Clima y Aire Limpio por tener presente nuestro gremio. Son más de 10 años en los que con la ayuda de ellos hemos logrado muchos de los procesos que hemos incorporado en nuestra organización. Estar incluidos en la Mesa Ladrillera Nacional ha sido para nosotros es un sueño hecho realidad.